Well, hi guys, and so good to see you. Uh, this we've got two sessions. This is two roughly twenty-minute sessions, so it's uh, a lot of content here. So we've got to get into two different parts. So yeah. I, I've uh, called this. we well, really it's the gates. They always say the gates. The gates. But the the core thought, the core thinking behind it really is that this is that God is the ultimate transformer. Right. Now, you thought the movies Transformers were, were good, but, you know, it's just, it's just a rip-off, really. <laughs> God is the ultimate transformer. Now, if I was to define the New Testament in one word, uh, of course, other than the gospel and, oh, and other than grace and <laughs> other than a whole bunch of other words, <laughs> it would be transformation. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. God is in the transformation business. Right. He is good enough and gracious enough and loving enough to not leave us as we are when we first arrive through the gospel. Anybody thankful for that, right? Some of you more than others. Uh, So God's the ultimate transformer. So here's the deal. Something is shaping you. In Romans 12, uh, chapter 2, it says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the new of your mind. It's interesting that the the core, uh, was it the suffix, of both words is formed. Mm. Something's forming you. Mm. But here's the deal. The world conforms you, but God transforms you. So it's not like, oh, when I come to Christ, I'll get formed. No, no, no. Right now, people who aren't in Christ are being shaped. They're being formed. But they're unfortunately being conformed. They're being conformed to the world's patterns. They're conformed to the world's philosophies, thinking, what have you. Once we come to Christ, a new day begins, a, ju- a brand new pathway begins. And yes. it's, the, it's the pathway of transformation. Yeah. And it's forever. Mm-hmm. Well, at least until, the, mm-hmm. until Christ returns. And so God's in the, he transforms us. Do not be conformed to this world, yeah. but be transformed. Interesting, not by a move of the Spirit, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the change of thinking is a core part of the process of transformation. God wants to change our thinking. And, and it's in the thinking realm, the thought realm. Interesting, Isaiah 55, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts are above yeah. your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that, that about Moses. Israel knew the acts of God, but Moses knew the ways of God. Yeah. Part of transformation is understanding the ways, the way the kingdom works. Yeah. Can you perceive that? And if I'm talking to leaders, which I am in this amazing room, leaders, future leaders, potential leaders, is that great leaders don't just see what God is doing. Great leaders see how God is doing it. They see the patterns of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. Can you see those things underneath? When great preachers and and, and men and women of God come to your context, don't just listen to great preaching See, why are they saying that? Or yeah. how are they saying that? Look, look, at, look at the why and the how, not, not just the what, which is the important thing. Yeah. So God is into the transforming business. Yeah. And of course, we are created and formed in His image. If we go back in the Scriptures to Genesis chapter, 20, uh, chapter 1, verse 27, it says, uh, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him male and female. Just as he created man, male and female yeah. aspects of God. But he created us. We're, we, every single person on the face of the earth that has ever lived is created in the image of God. Yeah. How crazy is that? Wow. That's almost hard to believe, yeah. especially when you look at some people. <laughs> that didn't quite come out the way it meant to. That's Genesis 1.27. But if we go to Genesis 2.7, it says, Then the Lord formed the man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living creature. So here we have these two concepts in the early part of the Bible that we are created in his image, but we're also formed. So Adam and Eve were both created and formed. He he created in his image. He put the the seed, the the DNA, the genesis of his image in them, but he formed them into these images and and the expression of God in their world. This is amazing. So when they fell, when Adam and Eve fell, They still had in them the DNA of of God's image, but they lost their form. Like I'm not a very good golfer, but, you know, (laughs) apparently golfers have, you know, sometimes their form is good, sometimes their form isn't good. 
they're, they're, they're still the same golfer. Yeah. They've still got the same talent right. and ability, but, but sometimes they lose their form. And, and we as humans have certainly lost our form. Yeah. So the gospel's role is to re-begin the process of reshaping right. humanity right. into the image of God, into the back to that image. Yeah. But it's on the inside. It's just got to express its form outwardly Amazing. into our lives, our, our attitudes, our thinking, our principles, our culture, our lifestyle, everything's got yeah. to express that form, yeah. which, is, yeah. which is a great thing. So how are we doing so far, right? right. Yeah. Interesting, um, um, in Isaiah 43, verse 1, it says, O Jacob, I created you. O Israel, I formed you. Wow. Same person. Right. Same person. Yeah. So, so ja- every one of us <laughs> have a Jacob in us. Yeah. Yeah. So the image of God in us, yeah. but wow. not yet formed. But every one of us have an Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So God is in the process of changing that. So the, the question to us this morning is which one woke up this morning? <laughs> <laughs> did Jacob wake up this morning or did Israel wake up this morning? Because the challenge is to stay in the form. You know, there's an interesting scripture, not on the screens, but the interesting scripture that in, in Philippians says, Paul talking to the Philippian church, only live up to what you've already attained. There's a, there's a level of revelation. There's a level of, of exposure to the principles of the kingdom. And once we discover that, we're only accountable to what we see. We're only accountable to what we've been revealed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but once, we, once we've been revealed to that, then you, we're accountable for that, wow. to live at that level. Yeah. And that's what backsliding is. Backsliding is not being responsible for something that we, know, we don't know or don't have, can't see. It's once we've come into Christ, we, we yeah. backslide to a previous form, to a previous yeah. thing, and, yeah. and we're being below the purpose of God. Right. Uh, and, and may not be turning away from God, just living below the purpose of God, yeah. uh, which is an incredible thing. It's interesting, and in in, through the Bible, God was in, into the name-changing business. He yes. just loved changing name, yeah. you know. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, let's not call you that anymore. <laughs> let's call you something else. Or he yeah. developed their name. He, developed, he created a transformed version of the name, obviously Abram to Abraham, yeah. Sarai to Sarah. Uh, and if you, if you study... Study that process. It's yeah. that wasn't insignificant. Yeah. Yeah. I did a study once on the on, on well, what what was the significant thing that he changed Abram's name to Abraham? And well, obviously, you know, we added the H, the breath of God. But what was it that changed? Was it? And I, I found ten things that didn't change his name. I don't have those ten things on me right now, <laughs> but trust me, there were ten things. <laughs> uh, it was warfare. It was tithing. It was yeah. a whole bunch of things, yeah. wow. and none of them, none of them represented. <laughs> A change of name. You know what it was? It says, and finally, I think it's Genesis 17. Uh, it says, and finally, Ab- Abram yielded before God. Wow. So the beginning of transformation is, is a, a complete yielding. So it's like, yeah. it's God. It's not my life anymore. Yeah. It's your life. And that's the beginning of change. So right. Abram, he changed Jacob to Israel. He changed Abram to Abraham. He changed Simon to Peter. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Simon to Peter. <laughs> Got myself confused then. <laughs> it's interesting that he was Simon, then he was Simon Peter, and then he was Peter. I think that reflects the fact that there's a journey through the process. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and there are certain moments, depending on how Simon was acting, that, <laughs> that Jesus would call him Simon, <laughs> or sometimes Simon Peter. So it's an interesting journey watching that little yeah. little interaction there, because right at the end. He uh, restores him to his full Peter state, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is an awesome thing. Uh, so, so there's this, there's this progress. Okay, so there's the, the, the framework of, of, of this. And look, probably the core scripture is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16 to 18, one of my favorite passages of scripture. And we'll come back to this in the second part of this session. Uh, and it says, I'm paraphrasing you, by the way. Uh, it says uh, in, in the NIV, it says something like, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, uh, the veil is removed. Yeah. I just love that concept for a second too, is that whenever anyone. Yes. Right. Yeah. Come on. So when can this happen? Whenever. Yeah. Who? Anyone. Yeah. I just, it's such the universal, yeah. it's the gospel. Yeah. Whenever anyone yeah. turns to the Lord, it doesn't say whenever anyone becomes a full-on on fire Christian. 
No, all you need to do is just turn Come to on. the Lord. Just whenever yeah. anyone turns to the Lord, just, just the slightest inclination. Yeah. It says the veil is removed. And the veil represents many things. We could go into the theology of that in terms of its representation of the, the Old Testament law and what have you. But essentially, it's, it's the visual blockage between us and God. The, yeah. the, thing, the, the, the thing that blocks our view of God, yeah. sin, humanity, our works, the law, whatever it is, yeah. once the veil is removed, we have now direct access to see God. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. And basically it goes on and says, therefore now we see Christ, we right. see Him. Yeah. And, and it says, you know, that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we now, I love this, we now, beholding His glory, are transformed wow. from glory to glory. From glory to glory. We're transformed from glory. There's much in that. I could go for six months in that one scripture. Yeah. We are now transformed. Okay. Did I say transformed? Transformed. But interesting, it says from to, from to, from glory to glory. Yeah. So it's not instant. It's not overnight. God is not an overnight God. Yeah. It is It is process. It is sequential. Yeah. It, it, it is It is. It is incremental. It is yeah. bit by bit, almost to the point where you can't see it. And, of course, that's how kids grow. It's how you grew. You, you yeah. didn't just sort of go, boom, here I am. You know, like, you, you, When you see your nephew uh, and then a year later see them, they, oh, wow, look at it. And we, it's so crazy. We go, gee, you've grown, as if they wouldn't. You know, like. <laughs> but it's obvious. But if you saw them every day for that six months, yeah. you wouldn't notice. Yeah. Not like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, gee, you've grown. Uh, they have, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just not noticeable. And that's how the Christian life is meant to be. It's yeah. like from glory to glory. But it also says from glory to glory. Okay, let's go to the glory concept in a second. Okay, so here is, here is Jesus in his full glory. Yeah. This, sorry, not me. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm representing. In his full glory. Yeah. We're here and the veil is removed. We behold glory. So we're not becoming Christians we are, we are beholding Christ. There's wow. a difference. Yes. Wow. And I, I'm not so much into Christianity as a code, as a, as a religion. I'm into, we need to be Christ followers, Christ yeah. pursuers, because it's the glory of God. So here, here he is in his full glory. I could, I could go on and on about glory. The whole of the Bible, one, summarize the, word, the Bible in one word, glory. Wow. Glory. Yeah. When man fell, he lost the, he lost the form but he lost the reflection of God's glory. And therefore, the, the, the entrance, the presence of glory was lost on the earth. And God so trusted and wanted that in humanity that he, he, he didn't say, I'll bring it back again, I'll, I'll reappear. He, he went on a journey of redemption so, and he wanted to restore again that glory back into humanity so that they would bring the glory back into the earth, which is a crazy thing. Crazy thing. So there's, there's Jesus. Says, okay, so glory. And, and now our job, if we read most of the New Testament, but particularly the book of Romans, and particularly Romans 8, which is the pinnacle of that book, it says the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed, yeah. waiting for the glory to emerge, waiting. The yeah. earth is wanting. It, it doesn't, the world does not need more morality. It doesn't need more another religion. It needs the presence of God's glory. Yeah. Through the believers, yes. through us individually, through us corporately, it's the glory of God. So, that, so this thing of transformation is not a small thing. It's not like, oh, yeah, it's a nice option. You know, glorious church, unglorious church, doesn't matter. The unglorious church will still get the job done. No, it won't. The unglorious, the unglorious church does not reflect the nature, the, the values, the core, the power of the kingdom. We are called to this. And, and, and if the... The enemy can keep us from reflecting that glory. We'll just be a religious institution, but we need wow. to be the presence and the power and the love, the grace of God yeah. in action and in, in, in embodiment. So, right. so, but then, then, so it's all about glory. And look, if it, grace is the entrance to the kingdom, yeah. but glory is the purpose of the kingdom. It's very good. Wow. We hear a lot about grace. I'm like, well, that's, we, of course we need grace. We can't, yeah. there's, no, there's no access. So grace is the access, but glory is the aim. Yeah. Yeah. The aim is not grace. Yeah. The access is grace. We need grace, but it's not, it's not the ultimate. The ultimate is the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. And we're meant to be that, live that. And of course, the glory of God, yeah. to quote one of the great early church fathers, is man 
fully alive. The glory of God is not some cloud in a Pentecostal meeting that lands somewhere. Oh, there it is. Quick, rush over there. Before it goes, the ruffling of the waters. It's not. No, the glory of God is man fully alive. As you become the fullest version of you in Christ, that's the glory of God. In our marriages, in raising our kids, in the marketplace, that's the glory of God. And it's painstakingly and frustratingly slow. I've been working out with, um, I know that's not obvious, (laughs) with a bunch of guys, 20 guys, roughly. For the last 20 years, on the beach that I live in, and, and I love it. All, none of them are Christians. And I, I'm like being amongst these guys, and, and, and they become all really close friends, and we do meals together, and, and, and I, I just love it for the, for the sake of just having life and fun and so on. It's just wonderful from that point of view. But in my heart, I'm like, I want to have some influence on these people. Yeah. Surely. You know, and, and I feel, at, at times I felt like a failure and felt like inadequate. Wow. And um, just recently, just a couple of weeks ago, two of them came to church, on, uh, which is awesome. Come on. Got saved. Wow. Come on. And last week did their first next step and joined in the next wow. step program. It's great. And they're hungry for God and what have you. I'm like, oh, finally. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's painstakingly slow. And I feel like it's the seed of a bit of a thing that's happening now. <laughs> And I know that, but the point is that it's often not what we think it is. And the way God uses us, we, we, you, whatever context you're in, whatever marketplace context you're in, whatever social context you're in, you are the glory of God in that environment. Yeah. And the pressure is not to, to be religious. The pressure is to live that glory, to live it out yeah. in a way that, is actually real. Yeah. It's authenticity, but it's also power, and it's, and it's something in that. And you are, you are a seed of change in life in that context, yeah. which is great. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Let's talk about these. So the, 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 that scripture, 2 Corinthians 3, and we are transformed from glory to glory. So everybody yeah. say that after me. Glory. Glory. To glory. To glory. <laughs> It's not grammatically correct. It's like I'm transferred, transfer, uh, yeah, transferred, formed. I'm transferred from Sydney to Sydney. <laughs> well, you're either in one place, you're not. No, but you realise that the glory, there are levels and stages. There are, there are expressions of it. Right. So, it's, so we, we, we're, we're on this journey. And so part of it is then learning, A, that there is a journey. Yeah. There is a pathway. But I, okay, what is that? Often in the Christian life, it's like, yeah, I'm following Jesus, but I have no idea where I'm going. It's just, it's this vague thing and go to church and hopefully something will happen. But I believe we need to be equipped both as individuals, as believers, but also as leaders. So the individual needs to see the pathway, but the leaders, you you guys, need to know what the pathway is to get people onto it. And also to not promote people beyond the level of pathway that they're at. Because otherwise you're going you're to blow them away because they're not ready for what God is. Because it's the internal work of transformation yeah. that is the equipping, yeah. is the preparing of what God wants them to do. It's not just yeah. their gifting. So does that make sense? Hopefully yes. that makes sense. Okay. So, um, all right. So on the screen here, we, uh, we're going we're gonna to go through the gates. Is that all right? Yeah. Open up the gates. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... We've got these various levels, and we'll, we'll, it'll make sense as we go through it. Okay, so everyone begins in the world. No one's born a Christian. Yeah. I don't care if you were born as a pastor's kid in the baptismal font. <laughs> 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 sort of like Christian Lamar's, you know, like. <laughs> you were still born with sin in your heart and yes. life, and you need saving. Okay, yeah. are we good so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's really important to establish. <laughs> I hear people say, I've always been a Christian. I'm like, no, you haven't. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. Okay. Uh, the next is beyond the, the first step. The first tr- glory step transformation is getting from the world into the kingdom. Yeah. Now, that can be a long way. In fact, it's the biggest gap, you know. But between these, 
There's gates, and that's what we're going to talk about. The gate, the first gate is the gate of revelation. You can't go just, you know, I'm a Christian. I think I'll decide to be a Christian. Now, that, if there is that decision, it's because a gate of revelation was opened to you and suddenly it's not what you just believed, it's what you saw. Yeah. Yeah. Because the problem for the world, people in the world who need to come to Christ, it's, unbelief is not the issue. Blindness is the issue. Wow. Yeah. Unbelief is a consequence of a deeper issue, which is blindness. How do I know that? Do I have a scripture for that? Yes. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this age, little g, look, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers yeah. wow. so they cannot see. What? The glory of Christ. There it is again. Wow. So people are walking around blind. It's like, it's like, imagine sitting next to a blind person and holding up this little clicker, right, and going, see this little clicker? The blind person would go, No. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> and we go, as a Christian, don't be stupid. Look at it. See it. It doesn't matter how much you try to convince a blind person yeah. to see something. Yeah. It's not, they're not trying to be blind. Yeah. They're not pretending to be blind. Yeah. They are blind. Yeah. Yeah. They can't see Christ. Great. They can't see the kingdom. Yeah. I was in a meeting in 1978. My sister took me there, Sydney Town Hall. And uh, first Christian, I, mean, I was raised in a Catholic environment, but it was the first Christian born-again, spirit-filled environment meeting I've ever been to, Sydney Town Hall, 1978. Halfway through the meeting, my sister turned to me and said, what do you think? And I said, I believe. Wow. I'm in. Wow. I see it. It was just like Amazing. this gate wow. opened to me. And, yeah. and I said to her, where all these people come from? <laughs> Who are all these people? Because I was singing, it was filled with the presence. Of, I was like, I said, how long these people have been around? She said, thousands of years. <laughs> I looked around, I thought, actually, they, some of them have. <laughs> no, just I was a young, young guy, 20 year old. And suddenly I was in, and I saw. Christ became real. Yeah. I knew of Christ. I was raised. I, had, I went to, you know, catechism. I went to, I went to a school that talked about Christ. But I didn't, there was no revelation of it wow. on the inside of me. And yeah. suddenly that day, and everyone's story is different, yeah. I stepped through that revelation gate into I'm now in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Now, for some people, that one step can be six months. Yeah. Wow. It can be six years. Yeah. The time's irrelevant, but somewhere along the line, you've got to go from being a person in the world yep. to a person yes. in that. So we'll, we'll cover one more gate before we have a short break and get on to the next session. But okay, beyond, beyond the kingdom is the church. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm. Beyond the kingdom is the church. There are many, one of the diseases of the Christian world is that there are millions of people who are, who are in Christ, but not in his house. It's part of the glory transition, glory transformation yeah. is that people don't just know Jesus, but they belong to his community. Yeah. Yes. They're in the community of faith. They're not just in faith. They're in the community of faith. And that can yeah. be an interesting thing. And the gateway is this uh, gateway of commitment. Yeah. Right. Commitment. Mm. And commitment, by definition, is not short term. Yeah. You don't go, I'm committed for six months. You know, as you get married, yeah, I'm committed for, for six months. Yeah. You know, commitment by definition is forever. Yeah. Right. So, so that commitment gate where, where people are like, I'm in. I'm, I'm in the house of God. I, I, I'm going through that thing and I, I'm going to be part of this community. It's now not something I attend. It's part of my life. Yes. Yeah. I am now part of the body of Christ. I am in this thing, right. and it's and it's all sorts of things. It's attendance, it's engagement, it's yeah. involvement, it's 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 accountability, it's humility, it's, it's all the things that are wrapped up in this crazy thing called the church. And my wife and I walked into C three. wasn't called C three back then, but walked into C three back nineteen eighty. You know, we've got five hundred and forty churches now, but that was one. Wow. Twenty people. Pastor Phil and Chris walked in there and. You know, some of you have heard that story many times, but walked in and, and we, we, it was a, it's a supernatural thing. Yeah. We walked in because part of that commitment 
is connected to the other thing, which is the revelation. We had a revelation of Christ, but that day we had a revelation of the house of God. Wow. And that second, because we, we need to live in both revelations. Yeah. And, and we t- turn to each other. I had, you know, shorts and I bought shorts. I had long hair, <laughs> long blonde hair. I had hair. Uh, and so did Bernie. And uh, she still has, by the way. <laughs> I just got out of the surf and... Uh, We'd been married six months, so, you know, just T-shirt. Just, we were just a couple of surfies and university students. And, awesome. and we turn to each other simultaneously, and I'm sure it was in slow motion. <laughs> so my hair just went back. <laughs> and said, we're home. Wow. We're home. Now, we'd been looking for a church, and not, we hadn't gone to 37 churches. We went to 36. <laughs> uh, no, we've been to a couple of places and, and we were brand new believers and we never belonged to a church. Wow. And, and we went to different places to go to a fellowship just to, because you know, we just started, went to church and started to connect with Christians. Now, everywhere we went, they asked us the same question, where do you belong and where do you fellowship? And we're like, what do you mean where do you belong and where do you fellowship? We're Christians. We, yeah. we know Jesus and we read the Bible to each other. We had no concept mm-hmm. that this next step not just knowing Christ, but belonging to Christ and belonging to the family of Christ was a thing. And so God, in his grace, led us into that experience. And thank God led us to the experience we had. And we said, we're home. And then that Wednesday night, well, that night, Pastor Chris invited us to their connect group on Wednesday night. Wow. And we rocked up. We were vegetarians and it was a roast meal, being uh, <laughs> uh, a lamb roast. Uh, and we got healed that night. <laughs> Been healed ever since. Uh, see the power of transformation. Right? So good. Come on, so good. And walked in, and at about seven thirty, all these other people started walking in the house, and we're like, "What's going on here?" And we found out it was connect group night. Very clever, very clever. Uh, but that was thirty-eight years ago, wow. and been part of it ever since. And that that singular commitment to God's house, to God's fellowship, yeah. has it been an easy journey? No. It's been the wildest, crazy ride. Come on. Have I felt like uncommitting? You betcha. Because <laughs> you don't have commitment with like, boy, that was easy. No commitment's easy. You ever try to get fit? You ever try to lose weight? You ever try to stay married? You ever try to... Like commitment is hard and, and there are going to be seasons. But because you've got the commitment, because you've gone through that gate, you're on the other side of your decision. Yes. You're, you're on the other side of that gate and you shut the commitment gate behind you. Yeah. You bolt it. <laughs> you rust out the joints. You, 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 like, you, it's like there is no turning back to this thing. Amen. You have no options. You are in this thing. We are, Benny and I, we are committed to the house of God forever. Yeah. Forever. And not just universally or generally. We float around the house of God and we visit church to church. No, no, no. We are committed to this house, to this vision, to this culture, to these leaders. With all the warts and ups and downs and crazy seasons, we're in this thing because, and I'll finish on this and we'll have a break. In the kingdom, you discover eternity, but in the house, you discover destiny. How many believers have eternity, have eternal salvation, but are not living out their destiny because destiny always has a context? And that context must be the house of God. And we as leaders, everyone that's in this room, are not just trying to get people into Christ. We're trying to get them into community because that's where their giftings and their callings and relationships really matter so that that we can move together as a a community. So, all right, we're going to finish right now. And have a short break, come back to part two to this amazing TV series. Okay, thanks.